Factorio, a game about automation, industriousness, imperialism, and the effects of excessive sleep deprivation on the body and mind. You play as this brave entrepreneur known only as the engineer. He doesn't have an actual name, so I'll call him Jimbo. <laughs> Jimbo Crash lands on a strange alien world filled with an abundance of resources, strange trees, lakes filled with fish, and thousands of hostile alien hives. Jimbo, like most engineers, hates the indigenous population and will gladly eviscerate the natural landscape, cause untold death and destruction, and crush all resistance in pursuit of 2% faster gear production. Jimbo must use his hardened engineer hands to craft tools, machines, research new technologies, expand, and eventually make a dramatic and long overdue exit. However, our brave businessman is not alone. On this alien world are aliens. A bunch of very aggressive hippies who really do not like pollution, but simultaneously they feed off it to become larger, stronger, and much more vicious. So just like normal hippies. As one would expect, Jimbo doesn't like the number of illegal aliens entering his factory and would like to leave. In order to leave, Jimbo needs to construct a rocket. To do this, he's going to have to use his very wide engineer brain to develop a factory that produces and transports materials, researches technology, and can defend itself against the very ungrateful natives. Jimbo starts with only his roughened palms, a gun, a drill, and a furnace, and must transform the natural landscape into a producing at the highest capacity and the lowest standard of ethics possible. First, our boy Jimbo will need iron, copper, stone, and coal to power and build his startup. I'd recommend going out and vertically integrating a few huge rocks to quickly collect stone and coal. The drill and furnace are used to automatically mine and smelt ore into useful products. These products can be transported around with inserters and belts. Next, you'll need electricity to power your great ambitions. This is done at first with boilers and steam engines. They turn water and coal into electricity and fresh air. There will never be enough electricity, so make it big. The electricity will be used to power our better inserters, labs, and assemblers. Assembly machines are the foundation of any good factory. This is where all of your are produced. The labs are used to research new fancy technologies and are fueled with beakers full of various colored, dubious liquids. This is what all the expansion is about, producing more and more dubious liquid to research better and better technologies. When does it end? Never. The research can go to infinity, and as such the expansion will never cease and Jimbo's thirst for conquest will never be quenched. Speaking of conquest... Just like in real life, you can create a military industrial complex for your factory to fight off the brown terrorists. Biters, enemy of the factory and haters of progress. Each building in your factory produces pollution. Biters don't like pollution. Once they get a whiff of your naturally enriched artisanal fresh air, they will come. Biter hives absorb pollution to create more biters, more hives, and evolve. Look at these entrepreneurs, engineering their dreams and collaboratively forging ahead of the pack, assertively initiating proactive leadership to establish a self-actualized, synergized, streamlined brand and leverage a brick by brick approach to cultivating the highest creative technology sound network of integrated hives. <clears throat> Just like a big business, I'll make some acquisitions, and the free market will reign supreme once again. In the early game, the biters haven't been exposed to as much fresh air, and are very weak, but so is our brave, resourceful founder. I'd recommend getting to know the turrets. They'll be your best buds in the early game. Give your base a generous coating of turrets to facilitate expedited biter removal. Turrets and guns need ammo, which can be crafted by either your boy Jimbo, or by using assemblers. Initially, you can just take the ammo straight from the assemblers and manually place it into the turrets. Or you can automate it and have your valued employees transport the ammo into each of the turrets for you. This stage of the game is known as the scared bitch phase, where the biters are a legitimate threat to your beautiful, tiny shit factory. I wouldn't recommend going to war with the biters until they either begin encroaching on your land, or you encroach on theirs. <laughs> The 
The biters will also unionize and send out raiding parties to demand higher wages, workers' rights, and will attempt to tear down your great institution. The military science pack can be used to research better union removal technology. Just like in real life, unions are removed with higher bullet damage, laser turrets, air fresheners, long range eviction notices, and wait, Gandhi, what are you doing here? Yep, there are nuclear weapons in this game too. Nuclear weapons provide a much more hands-on approach than the other endgame biter removal solutions. The most automatic way of ethically and responsibly terminating illegal aliens is by using artillery. Specifically, the artillery train. You can build outposts around large groupings of biters and deliver notices of eviction from many kilometers away. This is a good way of keeping the biters a good distance from all your fresh air making them much less likely to intrude on your private land, and worst of all, unionize. <laughs> the closest I've ever come to experiencing aggressive crack addiction would definitely be Factorio. After I started writing the script, I decided to open the game in case I was forgetting anything. I opened the game at 9am and played near non-stop until 1am. All told, I probably spent around 14 hours in Factorio that day. Not recommended for health, but it was certainly very fun. So how can this happen? Well, Factorio was full of positive feedback loops that build off each other. Kinda like crack. Each task you complete follows on seamlessly to the next, and are all building towards a final goal. For example, to get blue science we need a list of three items, some of which require oil. So we get oil, hook it up to a refinery, refine the oil into petroleum, combine petroleum with some water to create sulfur, use the rest of the petroleum with some coal to create plastic bars, and then use the plastic bars with green circuits and copper wire to make red circuits. <laughs> combine the red circuits with some of the sulfur, and engines, and voila! Blue science. But we're not done yet. This little setup hasn't been optimized. So we make some more assemblers for blue science, but there are a lack of red circuits, so we increase the scale of It never ends. But poor planning, a slow computer, and TERRORISM can definitely cap out the amount of science per minute you can make. Once you progress further along the tech tree, new, faster methods of extracting labor from your employees are unlocked, and more productive, less ethical, and much more PROFITABLE designs become possible. The research does take quite a long time, so the added complexity is only after you've built enough of the factory and mastered some of the basics. Designing modules for the factory, sticking them on and watching your creation work is a feeling that only the strongest, most refined crack can emulate. <laughs> You'll have to make some sacrifices if you want to play Factorio. Only small things though. Like socializing. The assemblers are my friends. Or sleep. Factory isn't going to build itself. Unless you literally make it build itself. Or food. Come on bro, there's raw fish, you can just eat the raw fish bro, come on, that's good, it's got a lot of calories bro, just eat the raw fish, there's heaps of protein bro, just eat it. I have come here to chew gas. Once you've built your starter factory, got some blue science, and scratched Jimbo's expansion itch, things start getting interesting and more difficult. You'll probably start to notice that the game becomes less about making items than it does about transporting items. This is measured with... Also a convenient way of measuring urethral diameter. There are several ways to transport items, some of which are more effective than others. Number one, manually moving them in and out of your inventory. Definitely the highest, but not automated at all, and only reserved for Factorio plebs, like myself. Making inserter lines. Why? Belts, the staple of any solid base. Fairly high throughput, depending on which of the three tiers of belt you use. More belts can be added in parallel when even higher is needed. Usually belts will end up pretty messy, which is good. If you want to avoid your factory resembling spaghetti, I'd recommend building a BOSH. Basically just a bunch of belts in a line that are spaced far enough apart that underground belts can go between them. BOSH is good because it centralizes where all of your resources go. It's easy to add more stuff off a bus because you just branch off like a tree. BOTS. Use these guys when you can't be bothered making belts anymore. Bots can fly over everything and are paid a very generous zero dollar wage. Bots are especially useful when your base looks like everyone's favorite Italian pasta. Bots technically have an unlimited throughput because you can always just add more, 
but it's a bad idea using bots for high volume transportation over long distances. Finally, I don't care what other people think, trains are cool. Don't ask me how to use trains because I kinda understand but definitely not enough to explain to other people. This video on absolute basics is over an hour long so they're pretty complex. But once you get the hang of trains, you can never go back. Trains allow for extremely high th and like, the trains. Trains use train stations for logistical control. They can be set up to leave for specific conditions, like leave when the cargo is empty to go get more. In my first few bases, I went with a simple point-to-point -point train system that had a rail that could only be used for one train at a time. This is much simpler initially, but harder to scale up. I'd recommend using one-sided trains with two or even four sets of rails, one lane in each direction. Recently, I've begun using a modular system, where all the trains share the same basic rail and can go in and out of different modules to deliver materials. Trains can be pretty dangerous, which adds to a base's cool factor. They move very fast and even when zoomed all the way out, they can cruise in and delete you without warning. Placing signals is the difficult part of trains, but now that there are these handy colored lines, understanding what's going on is definitely a bit easier. Basically, the signals divide rails into blocks. That's all I know. I would say the mid-game ends once you've flown your first rocket into space. So, the first rocket has been flown. What next? Expansion. The focus now shifts away from th and instead optimizing bottlenecks. Bottlenecks are anything in your factory that reduces total production. For example, if I've built a massive setup to produce, say, and I hook it up to a single refinery, it's obviously not going to function at capacity. To fix this bottleneck, I'll just add a couple more refineries to cope with the higher demand, but now there isn't enough oil being produced, so we go and expand the oil production. This is all great, but our factory is slowing down because there isn't enough electricity, so we go to stamp down a few solar panel and accumulator blueprints to cope with demand. Problem is, there aren't enough solar panels in storage. So we build a new solar panel producing module, but we've run out of blue belts. And what do blue belts need? We go around fixing up bottlenecks and slowly bringing up the factory's production, and finally we can produce lube at maximum capacity. Congratulations! The factory that made our first little rocket is now the starter base, and the real OPTIMIZATION begins. A very large amount of resources should be put into making level 3 modules, beacons, rails, belts, and other machines. This is where the factory starts getting into big boy numbers. Upgrade your train lines to four lanes. Place hundreds upon hundreds of beacons. Start saturating tens of belts worth of resources. And most importantly, do what must be done. Drain the swamp. There isn't really a goal in the endgame other than trying to squeeze out every ounce of productivity from your factory. This is also the phase where time becomes an illusion, merely getting in the way of constructing your perfect factory. As you plunge deeper and deeper into your factorio binge, the clock will begin to accelerate. Time itself will seem to slip away faster and faster. You will play until your entire body is shaking from hunger and dehydration. But this won't stop you. Those 10 minutes spent making food can and will be better spent expanding blue circuit production. As you fall deeper into a trance, you'll begin to hear voices beckoning. The factory must grow. 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 Generally, the end game lasts until you hit your goal science per minute or die of starvation. Yep, there are heaps of mods for Factorio, many of which are completely game changing. My personal favourites would be Factorissimo, Portal Guns, Rampant, Bob's Mods, and Dark Matter Replicators. Dark Matter Replicators aren't really all that smart. In fact, the premise is really dumb. It gives you these machines that can literally make anything in the game if you just give it enough power. I got this completely stupid, hideous factory well over 1000 science per minute in only a couple of days just because you can skip all the actual gameplay of Factorio and deliver science packs directly into the labs. Factorissimo. This mod is dope. It gives you these factory buildings that are vaguely tardis -y. Very fun to build tightly packed modules, or even build factory buildings inside other factory buildings. Portal Guns. 
Anything that makes walking obsolete is good. Rampant. This mod makes the biters into more of a hive mind. Instead of individual hives building up an attack, all the hives surrounding your base will launch an attack at once in these huge waves. Very spooky, and very fun. Bob's Mods. This is really more of a mod pack, but it basically extends the tiers of your buildings and adds new stuff. Instead of machines and modules ending at 3, it gives you higher tier buildings for speedier, even less ethical production. My favourite addition would be the plasma turrets. Definitely the best way of defending yourself against the huge alien hordes. And also turning Jimbo into a fine, electrified paste. So that's it. Factorio. Do yourself a favour and buy this game or I'll vertically integrate your cat. Also buy some crack. It's probably less addictive.